what's going on y'all what's going on how are y'all doing back with another new video for y'all today i know it's been a couple weeks i think since i posted a video i'm sorry for that i've had a lot going on like i keep saying um but hey we're gonna work on getting back to it y'all so i'm back call me the terminator or eminem either one I'm just trying to be in a good mood, y'all. To be honest, I'm pretty pissed off. I'm kind of in a bad mood. I'm just trying to be positive, though. So y'all check this shit out. <coughs> y'all ready? It's fucking story time. No, oh, fuck. I can't say fuck. Fuck. Um. <laughs> well, this video just got demonetized. So. Y'all check this out. This morning, it's Monday, by the way. We've been out a day early. So, what to leave out this morning? Went to my trailer, you know, as y'all know, I've talked about parking my trailer, um, I throw it from the house, I drop it, I'll put my uh, kingpin lock on it, and I'll drive my truck uh, home. You know, there's a small little lot. Um, you can probably fit, on a good day, if everyone parks right, probably fit six, seven trucks. Maybe eight. You know, as long as everyone parks right. Well, Friday I go to park is pretty full. Cool. And this one dude parked like a dick. I mean, he parked crooked as shit. Like, everyone else was pretty, pretty much straight. This dude parked crooked as hell. And, you know, really took up a lot of space doing so. And he, but he tried to drop his trailer. Well, I had to park next to him. There was nowhere else to park. I tried to park pretty close to him, but I was straight, you know, and it looked, it looked funny. You could tell he was park crooked based on the, between, you know, it looked like an end. See, he was so crooked, right? Well, anyways, I parked next to him. And now, if this dude was a heavy set dude, he was going to have a hard time getting in between his trailer. At least in the front, right? Because there wasn't a lot of room. You know, I was kind of on the edge of the entrance and whatnot, and like towards the entrance and it just it's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass right well i park brought my trailer and i leave right and i checked on it periodically well i come out today somebody has dropped my landing gear i'm talking they crunk it almost all the way down pretty damn near close and uh They also deflated some of my tires and boost my trailer about two feet backwards. I can tell by the marks on the landing, uh, the drag marks from the landing gear. And now, there's still like two trucks parked there, but one of the ones that isn't, or one of the trailers that isn't there no more, is the guy that was parked next to me. Which leads me to believe it was him. I know, I'm assuming, but I'm, not, I'm done giving people the benefit of the doubt. So, this guy thought he was really doing something. All he did was minor, minorly inconvenience me. Minor inconvenience to all of us. Because I have suspension dump on my truck, of course, right? All I had to do was drop my bags. But of course, because my tires still wasn't enough to get underneath the trailer, but I was able to get my frame underneath the trailer, up towards the tires, where it sticks out, you know, jack it up, flip my airbags back up. And there I just crunk the landing gear down the rest of the way, crunk them down, uh, drop it again, slid back under my trailer, no problem, right? Very little work. As far as the tires, Truck's got the auto, the trailer's got the auto inflate system on it. I didn't have to do nothing. So, this dude does park here kind of often. I am watching out for his trailer and I will see him again. We are going to have a little chat. You're not going to fuck with me or mine. Especially because you can't fucking park. I wish I had taken a picture. Seriously, it looks like an end. When the guy that was parked here, I can't 
can't do it because I'm driving. The guy was parked here. Him. Well. Him. Oh, you get the idea. That's me. You get the idea, right? I'm not paying a lot of attention to it. You got the idea. It looks like a freaking ass. Well, that's not my fault you couldn't park there, bud. So. Anyways, that was a little aggravating. But it's alright. We're gonna. We got it all situated. We're rolling now. We're gonna go pick up our load. Uh, we're heading up here about 26 miles away. I'm in uh, uh, Marion, Kentucky. You can tell the road. We're in Kentucky. About 24. And uh, we head up here, pick up this load. We're going to Amsterdam, New York. You guys can tell, I really don't mind these New York loads, especially when you're going to upstate because it's just country. It's peaceful. You know what they say? Do what they want, get what they don't. This is a $3,300 load, 24,000 pounds. Total of 980 miles. It's really not a bad load. Another load heading down to uh, Windsor Locks, Connecticut after that. I think it's paying like 1600 15 $1,600. And then I still got to look forward to find another one. There wasn't a lot of good ones coming out of that area yet, but there usually is. So we'll look and we'll find something. So, how are y'all liking the Magnum PI? The, that look, the whole uh, Miami Vice look there. Because <laughs> uh, I was trying to be in a good mood. Truck needs a bath. Um, I haven't washed it. It's filthy. It's dirty. I'm trying to get out of the habit of washing it all the time. You know, just wash it once a month or so. Or something. I don't know. It needs a bath though. Uh, so yeah. So. In one and three quarter miles, take exit 42 on the right to I-69 North. Yeah. I think it was me sitting over in Kansas City. Uh, I think that was the last video I made, if I remember correctly. I sat there for 19 hours before they finally unloaded me. Um, that was like two weeks ago at this point. Sat there for, like I said, 19 hours. They got me unloaded, went and picked up my next load in uh, Topeka, Kansas. Headed on to uh, Lebanon, Tennessee, dropped the load. days, I can think it was home for like a day and a half, um, and then I looked back out on uh, Tuesday, I got home on, I think it was Sunday, and I looked out Tuesday, on the right to I so, did that, so, then we left out last week, and we went to Optula, Florida, over close to Gainesville, I don't know how to Get the idea. We're close to Gainesville. This was aggravating. Oh man, this was aggravating. So I dropped that load. It went fine. It was a Walmart load. Not a big deal. And then I go to pick up my next load. Alright. Go to, uh. Where was I picking up? It was outside. It was close to. It was right on the, the state line of Georgia and Florida. Just above it, right? In three and a not too far from Atlanta. Well, I go to get loaded. They're loading me up. And these guys, three quarters of the way loaded, paper rolls. They freaking lift their forks too high in the trailer, and they've got the you know the clamp trucks. It's not a normal forklift. It's the clamp trucks, right? It's kind of curved for picking up big paper rolls. And he put two big ass holes in the roof of my trailer. Yeah. And then he comes in. Now, the cool thing is they were honest. They came and told me. And they were honest about it. I took pictures and whatnot. And, you know, I appreciated their honesty. And 
and they had to unload me. They couldn't let me go like that, right? So I had to go find a, I had to get a hold of Breakdown and, and DM and all that and let them know what was going on. It's nighttime, it was like, by this point, they'd already been loading me for like an hour and a half, it was like 10 p.m. And I had to go drop my trailer off in Savannah at this trailer repair place. I get there and the lady says, oh, we can't let you in. Um, you can't drop your trailer off until the morning. So I had to park out front and wait. And then drop my trailer. I was placed in pack. It was three quarter miles. Take exit 71 on the right to US 62. supposed to be dropping it. They wanted me to stay under it. And I was like, no, I got, the company says to drop it. I'm dropping it. So I drop it. Go pick up my next trailer. Head back to the place. They get me loaded. Fortunately, this time without incident. And it goes on up to Kingsport, Tennessee. Now, of course, by this time I'm kind of late getting there because, well, I had to wait until the next day to get loaded because the first time they damaged my trailer, right? Well, it said I could drop the trailer at any time. I was just dropping my trailer out of this place. Is it uh, Eastman Chemical? I get there right at midnight, almost midnight. They only need to drop in hooks between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Don't make a lot of sense. I'm dropping it in a gravel water. Take exit 71 on the right to US 62, then take so, the second left. I had to sit there and they were trying to tell me I couldn't park on um, on site. But between trying to figure out what's going on, because my information said I could drop it at any time, you know, it said between what was it? Um it's between like 8 a.m. Thursday. I said I have between 8 a.m. Thursday and 8 a.m. Friday. So I said I had like a 24-hour period. I could drop it. So it was just a pain. Turn left on US I told him, I said, look, that sucks. I have to stay here and park here because I'm almost out of hours and I've wasted so much time trying to figure out what's going on because this is the information that I have that it's basically ran my clock out. And the closest parking place is like 20 miles away. So I parked there. I'll drop it the next morning. Um, pick up my next load at Walmart or Chub, a bunch of Chub pallets, and uh, head on to Nashville, drop these pallets off, and I headed home. It's pretty cool because the guy watched my videos, he uh, went up and talked to him. I didn't even know he watched my videos, he was talking to some other USA, uh, another USA IC, and uh, it's cool, it's cool when I get noticed. You're watching this, hey dude. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool when someone notices me. Because I just, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. In one and three quarter miles, but, turn right on US 6. Yeah, so it's been kind of eventful. Uh, Taking care of a lot of stuff. Got a lot of decisions I'm trying to make um, as far as my business and personal stuff. And I really want to buy a house. Same time, I don't know if I should wait for the market to change, or should I go ahead and buy another rig? You know, I've got so many, so many different options and, and things I can do that you know I want to be productive. With, you know, different things, right? So I don't know. We'll figure it out, though. We'll do something. Do the best we can. That's all we can. One in the quarter miles, turn right on US 641. Things are going pretty well though. Um, you know, well, not last week, the week before. I did have kind of a short week. Um, I only got a couple loads in, so I didn't bring home that much. Just because I left out on a Wednesday, plus that load that where I sat there for like 19 hours, that really put me behind. And it just made it kind of a short week, so. It's all right though. You have those weeks sometimes, and you just gotta do what you can, and you know, prepare for it. You know, yeah. You don't. I, you know, I've talked about those good weeks. You know, where oh, I'll, you know, gross over seven thousand dollars. You know, I told you I did that three weeks in a row. Not every week's like that. It's not. So that's part of the socks. You know, we, we always want to have weeks like that. But, you know, Turn right at the traffic light. it's not how it works. And when you do have bad weeks, it makes you appreciate the good weeks even more. So, 
Hey, it's alright. Still brought home some money. So, that's about it, y'all. The video's getting a little long. I saw a little update, but y'all know I'm still alive. This is right now. But, uh, get on here, pick up this load, we're like, Mountain Boy. Continue on US 641. I'm sure y'all are probably tired of hearing the GPS. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all have a great day, great week. Y'all be safe out there, and I'll see y'all around. Peace out, y'all.